a few years ago I made a mosaic quilt and I had all these little squares of fabric left over and I had not wanted to um, throw them out because they were made of um, cotton quilting fabric really good quality which is hard to find in my country and so I hung on to them and I had this whole box full of fabrics and I finally decided I should do something with them so these were three and a fourth inch squares which I then proceeded to cut down to half an inch. Not all of them, just what I needed for this project. And so I thought I would share a little bit of this uh, mini mosaic project that I'm going to work on today. Okay, so this is a design that I'm going to work with. And so I've printed it out just on plain paper. And I am going to be working with this um, light steam seam too. Uh, because it's uh, very light, fusible, but when I take the one paper off, I, if I lay this on, I can see the design really easily. So it's a little bit bigger than my printed paper. I'm going to just use a little bit of painter's tape to hold this down and the tape so it doesn't move as I work. And I will do the same with the light steam seam. Just going to kind of center this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use those little pieces, those little squares, half inch squares of fabric to lay down. Since this is sticky, it will hold it temporarily in place until I can um, press all those little pieces down. Okay, so remember these are really tiny pieces. Uh, so, in most cases I'm going to have to use my um, To hold it down. I guess I'm just going to start, and if you look, I, I will start just any place, I guess, and just start laying it down. And I will leave a tiny space between one um, square and another. It doesn't really matter if you if you use the same fabrics over, but okay. So in cases like this where I can't really fit the three squares, what I'm going to do is the two and then I have um, some smaller pieces that I can fit in between those. But what you want to do is leave a little tiny space between each of the pieces so that when you put the, you're going to put this on top of a background a piece of fabric and this will resemble the grout if you were really doing a true mosaic, okay? In this case, I'm just going to trim along that line. I don't want to go 
outside of the lines of my design. So in places here where we're starting to whoop a little bit, I might have to put like a little triangle in there. Or different. Just to make it fit. So I finished uh, laying down all the pieces for the lizard. Um, as you can see, it's a painstaking little job. It takes a lot of patience and time. Uh, but it's just one of those things you just put on some good music or um, listen to an audiobook, which is what I've been doing, and just take your time and have fun while you do this. So now that I've got these pieces laid down, it's time to fill in the background. And I have divided the background in three um, areas. And so each one will be kind of a different um, uh, color. So I'm going to start with the middle part, which is um, going to be just a little bit tricky here, but it's the same thing. You just have to cut some very narrow pieces at times to fill in around the, these really narrow um, feet here. And once again, it's just a matter of taking your time and being a little bit patient and laying down the pieces. So let's go ahead. Okay, so I finished laying down all these itty bitty little pieces. And um, what I'm going to do next then is uh, to press this to fuse all these pieces. I'm going to, for this, I'm going to use the same release sheet uh, from the Steam of Seam Light. And um, I will press that in all these pieces and then we'll come back and discuss um, finishing, how to finish this. So I've fused um, all these little pieces onto the web and uh, I've removed the uh, paper from it 
And so um, you can see that there's still places where you can see the fusible web coming through. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I've got, I've layered a backing fabric, a piece of batting, and then a top fabric, which is where I will be laying this on top of. And then I will fuse this. I've just chosen a white uh, fabric so that the white will show through um, and will appear. That appears to be like the grout in the mosaic. Okay, so then from here I need to press this again to fuse the, um, the mosaic onto the background fabric. And because of the web that's still exposed there, then it's best to use either parchment paper or a Teflon sheet. Uh, don't put your iron directly onto this. So cover it and press it down. And then the other thing I'm going to do is because there's still like little places where like little threads and stuff pop up, I am then going to layer a piece of tulle. On top it's clear, so it really doesn't take away, but just it's just another protective layer here. And then I will proceed to quilt it. <clears throat> um, in other mosaic quilts that I've done, usually what you do is you quilt along what would be the grout line. But here, these are, since they're half inch squares, that's pretty narrow. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to outline quilt along the lizard. And then um, I think I will quilt just this horizontal line and a vertical line about half an inch apart and just kind of follow the the lines. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of that now and when I come back I'll show you my finished piece. So here's the finished little wall hanging. In the end I did uh, end up quilting along all of the grout lines. Uh, it just seemed better and um, in the end it's a, a stiffer little wall hanging too. So um, don't forget when any project to add a label. I hope that this has been an interesting uh, exercise for you too and I thank you for watching.